welcome to Indie Capital. I'm Pamela Nash, and this is Michelle Farrell. Michelle, local cinematographer, gaffer. How did you get your start in cinematography? Um, well, basically, uh, 10 years ago, uh, I just wanted to shoot a movie, and I wrote, produced, directed my own movie. It's a little independent called Frankie Seven. Well, um, uh, we got a bunch of producers. We got some gear. And um, I blocked all the shots, uh, not really all the lighting, but there was a lot of things I did. And um, I took that as my demo to get my first shooting job. And I shot for uh, Gordon Del Giorno up in uh, Wilmington, Delaware, the Film Brothers. And we shot, I shot my first movie as a cinematographer. So the whole idea from the beginning was to make a living at doing independent films. So, so far, so good. So you just picked up a camera, shot a film, and it was good enough to get you a job. <laughs> like, <laughs> do you have a background in photography or art or design? No. Uh, wow. Actually, uh, I went to uh, Sheffield Institute, which was a basic um, uh, uh, camera uh, video school. Oh, okay. But it wasn't enough knowledge mm -hmm. of uh, to um, to do what I wanted to do. So what I did is read a lot of books. Uh, and that was pretty much it in uh, get on, getting on film sets. But to um, uh, just get the whole ball rolling is to have s something and use that as your calling card. And then mm -hmm. uh, you, after I shot my first movie, um, and that was it. Just kept snowballing. I get this and I get that, and uh, it was anything to stay alive. And uh, the the whole deal has been is to keep growing the company and the equipment. So now I got um, uh, I shoot, I light. Sometimes I do sound, but I also have a rental uh, business. So it it, it all is um, in the whole grand plan, grand scheme to stay alive and support <laughs> myself as a independent filmmaker, which isn't that easy. One of the things we talk about a lot on this program is film school or no film school. Um, I kind of brief survey found that most people who've gone to film school think you need to go, mm -hmm. and most people who haven't gone to film school think you don't need to go. Mm -hmm. what, what, what's your position on film school? Um, well, I teach a class at the Creative Alliance, but it's only a one to three day class, depending mm -hmm. on what, you know, who's, you know, deciding that. But um, I, I think film school, um, and I've heard both arguments too, but I, I, I think um, film school, any knowledge in the film business is good. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it hurts you. Now, would I spend my money on that? No, I'd probably buy a red, uh, an Epic or an uh, Alexa or something. Um, if you just go and get them film sets, you'll learn. The kid who used to work for me uh, a long time ago, and he, he spent his 18th birthday uh, on our film set, and it was my first gaffing job. Um, he's out in New Mexico. I heard he's making over $100,000 a year, and he hasn't been to film school one day. Thing is, to get on film sets, you'll learn a lot on film sets, but knowledge is power, and that film background does not hurt you. But you can go to college, and you might be a manager at Wendy's, and <laughs> it's true. what you do and how you apply yourself with anything that you're self-employed. Mm -hmm. is going to make you or break you. And how do you, how do you advise <coughs> students that take your class? They can, they can learn technique, they can learn you know, how to operate cameras, but how do they develop the eye for what, for what they see? Well, you know, how do they I, tell the story visually? Well, um, you know, I don't teach a camera class per se. But I, I think any of that is all in just photography and learning, you know, the, the golden rule and, then, you know, the, the little tic-tac-toe thing and knowing your sweet spots and, and you know, learn about contrast and warming and cooling. Uh, and, and a lot of that is just in f books. And uh, a lot of it is just in books. And uh, with this whole digital revolution, what the DSLRs, and now that forces the big company, Sony, Panasonic, and Rihanna Red came out, um, that they're going to have a big chip and they're going to have that depth of field now, which, you know, the DSLRs pushed into that. And I think 
that because of this whole DSLR revolution, there's just a lot of amazing people coming out of this whole thing. And, uh, you know, some are good, and some of them are just people with a camera that are calling themselves DPs. And you know? this is interesting, because you're actually making your living doing this, mm -hmm. where a lot of people in the DC community are kind of volunteering for each other's sets and mm -hmm. working on each other's films, but not getting paid. Mm -hmm. How do you break out of that barter system and get yourself into a position like you did where you're getting paid for your work? Ooh. Well, I, I think that basically um, that is your film school when you're, you're going to this, but I think you got to be careful sometimes too because some people are shooting four and five, that's their fifth feature, and they're just getting everything for nothing. Well, I don't know. It's like, will you come and wash my car for nothing? You know, if I'm going to sit there for 30 days and work on your set, you know, I, you know, when you're first getting into business, I think it's a different thing. You need the experience. Mm -hmm. Once you get that experience, now you're a trained professional. And it actually, I haven't been to film school, but if I had a degree and I spent all this money and nobody, everybody just wants to pay me a, um, a Subway sandwich, I, I don't know. I, I wouldn't take that to, you know, as a compliment, <laughs> you know. So uh, you got to be careful because people do hoard a system. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I think, um, you know, and, and you got to see who plays fair and who is going to do something for your future or, or is somebody just going to say, I want something for nothing all the way through, you know. So you just got to be careful who you're dealing with. That's good advice. Now, you're not just a camera person. You've actually written, you've produced, you've directed. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about some of the other, other work that you've done besides cinematography. Well, um, my first script, Frankie's Heaven, I wrote, produced, and directed. I just mm -hmm. want to shoot a movie. And then, uh, um, you know, uh, I bought my partners out after that and, uh, and then started doing other people's works. Because uh, as a director, everybody gets out of film school. Everybody wants to be the director. Everybody wants to be, you know, the producer and all this. The fact of the matter is you got to pay the bills if you want to survive. Or you can do it on the weekends or whatever. But... If my greatest advice is to learn, get on sets, meet people, because people work with the people they work with and they know, mm -hmm. uh, and learn these skills, but learn how to crew, learn all the jobs. A lot of times, uh, you know, I've done sound on some big productions, not, you know, not, you know, just dock work and sound. I wouldn't jump right into a, a big, giant, full feature doing sound because I, you know, I'm not that good, but, uh, you know, I got a good sound kit and I know the basic stuff. You know, um, don't throw no big curveballs at me, and you know I could shoot the talking head all day long. Well, do the sound of the talking head. Um, oh, I forgot where we're going with this one. Oh, we're just talking. We're just talking about the different, um, besides cinematography, other things that you've done. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Anyway, I, I wrote and produced my uh, first movie, Frankie's Heaven, and that just mm -hmm. s s snowballed into the cinematography, but. Uh, since that, I have written another script. It's called mm -hmm. Heart City. And I have recently, uh, second time I sold this, because the first time I sold it, I opted it for two years. Well, that was long, that was four years ago. So now I've resold it to Ivy Street Productions. Now, um, my friend Jonathan Reed, uh, um, uh, you know, liked the script. He goes, You got any scripts? I'm like, Yeah, I got this one sitting here. He said, Send it to me. I love the script. and. And we went through the rewrites and all that. So he purchased the script straight out. I don't own it no more. Mm -hmm. And um, this is the first work that I just lost indefinitely for in, in, throughout the universe. And, uh, but he's, Jonathan's a smart cookie. And he knows some people. And who knows, this movie might just be something. You know, he might get it. If not, he said, if we do shoot it here, then I'm the cinematographer. And, you know, so we'll shoot together. And he's my friend also, so it was a good deal, so as a writer. And um, I also wrote a script called Potato Girl, and I hope to get that produced in the springtime. And, um, you know, like a, a, a bunch of close friends, I, I won't personally shoot a movie and just ask everybody to do it for free. You know, if you're shooting on Sundays, my first movie it was, I did the same thing. Mm -hmm. We only shot on Sundays. I don't want you to quit your day job to do my movie. So uh, if we shoot it, it would be straight through. And, uh, you know, I need money. Who's got money? <laughs> so as a writer, 
how do you make the choice, this one I'm going to send out and see if anybody will produce it, this one I want to produce myself? What, what are some of the things that you're thinking about when you decide whether to send your script out or, or do it yourself? Um, uh, with the scripts, I, I really, when I first got in business, I thought I was going to just write scripts, send them out, and they were going to buy them. And then you got to learn about query letters and, and all this other stuff. I don't. It's like, I know what, you know, the second script I wrote, I just want to write something different. You know, first genre was magical realism. Second was um, uh, kind of an urban piece. You know, this one's a comedy. And my next one, I think, is going to be a horror. So I, I don't, I'm not stuck to one genre. And um, for Theater Girl, I'm not even going to try to sell it. I'm going to try to shoot it. You know, but I'm, I, um, you know, I know some uh, people that know a little more than I do, and they said, get some faces in it. You know, if you want to sell something, you need faces. You need Hollywood people. You know, so that's the, that's the goal. So I'm hearing that a lot, actually. Oh, you have to have a name. You have to have. It. How do you get a name? Like <laughs> money. So yeah. you raise the money yeah. and well, they'll that, come? That's it, and hopefully someone likes your script and they do it at a different, decent rate, or your cousin is, you know, Val Kilmer. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, you know, and, then, and that's what it gets down to. It's a, a business of um, everything's tied in. And, you know, we were talking about Sundance earlier, right. or, you know, and everybody's going to Sundance and, and all this. And when you look at the m movies that are going to Sundance. Um, uh, you know, they've got names or you know, the narration by Tom Hanks, you know. I mean, I don't know Tom Hanks and I don't know anybody, you know. Right, so. none of my cousins are in the film industry. <laughs> right, and it's tough. You it's bastards. Tough. <laughs> so, uh, basically, what I, I, I've gotten uh, some money for Frankie's Heaven from somebody, just one of the actors happened to be really rich. He says, do you need some money? And I said, yeah. And uh, my documentary, um, uh, Mayor Drummond, had given me five thousand dollars, and uh, John Pogue, Capital Film Studios. I've done a couple of movies with him. Has given me five thousand dollars. They said, "But how do you raise money? It's like no people want money that like you and, and believe that you got to, you know, got something good, mm -hmm. you know, or just want to do it because they're your good friend, you know." Um, I, I give up on all these writing letters to get grants, and I, you know, I could spend more time, better time working. And doing something with the money, and then actually going through doing all the stuff. You know, I'm I'm, there, I'm sure there's people that do better than me. I'm just not good at it, so I just rather just work and just cut the middleman out and just. So once you wrap shooting on your film, your sh your film is done. What do you send it to film festivals? Do you make DVDs? Do you try to get distribution? What do you do? Well, with my movie Unraveling Michelle, mm -hmm. um, that was a documentary um, about my crazy little life. <coughs> And um, um, uh, shot that four years ago, and it went through the f festival circuit. But what you do is once you get your cut, which we were always changing, and oh, we could change this, we could change that. Um, you take and you send your query letters out. And, you know, you can't solicit distributors, so you have to have to ask them, can you send a copy? Well, then they say yes, they say no, and then when they say yeah, it's a solicited. And then you just send out your, you know, first you start with the query letter, and it's email now. And then you send them out your little press kit with your DVD. When they like it, they don't like it. You know, so it, it's one of those kind of things. So if you're an artistic type, you know, you, you've got the idea, you write your film, you, you shoot your film. How do you get over all these business hurdles? Ooh, well, see, uh, the, it, it's, it, it's, it, it's a film business, you know, it's not... It's, Film, I heard it on TV, film friendness. It's film business. Mm -hmm. And um, unless it's someone else is doing it for you, you got to do it. And it's more business than, than probably anything else, you know. Uh, just, all right, it's a creative business. It depends what you're doing, what department. But you got to start with an idea. And then you got to put the right formula down. Then you got to get the right people in it. Then you got to get the right technical people. And then you got to get all your places, and you got to get all your, and all this is all making deals. You know that's business. Mm -hmm. You know, and even after you go and you get in the can, you got to edit it all right. It's got to be sweetened. It's got to have music, or you know whatever you're doing. But you put all this together, and then now what? So it, it, it the whole thing is a business. You know, um, uh, now are you doing it very low budget? Or are you doing it medium budget? We do. 
um, 50,000 to 150, something like that. And, you know, I, I have a lot of gear. And um, most of the money that I actually make is because I bring the gear and I get a rental. Mm -hmm. So um, the gear is what keeps, keeps me alive. And, I, and, and I, I treated it like a business. And I have a website. And I have uh, business, business cards, not friendness cards, business <laughs> cards. So, um, you know, it, it is strictly a business, and you got to treat it so. And we can put your website up if you tell us your uh, website. Okay. It's um, www.absoluteindependentpictures.com. And we are going to look at some trailers at some of your work or some yes. clips. Why don't you tell us about some of the things that we're going to take a look at? Oh, some of them. Okay. Um, well, I knew of one, and the okay. one was from the documentary that screened um, uh, at Rosebud. And um, I'm not sure if they're going to screen it because uh, back then uh, it wasn't released and we, we didn't do anything with it, but they can screen it if they want uh, now. Um, but I guess the setup for that would be um, I had a little switch in my life a few years ago and uh, um, nobody knew, so I pointed a camera at my crew and uh, came out to my crew on camera. Well, you know I'm the camera operator because I was the only one that knew, so mm -hmm. I put them behind a mirror. So you know I'm the filmmaker, oh. and um, and you'll see you'll see that, that me coming out to uh, our sound guy, who ended up being our co-director, and one of the um, uh, local people here in Arlington, uh, uh, Greg Miller, um, came out to him. He was ACing for me back then, so you'll see that. And what made you choose that method to do it? Um, you know, this uh, I haven't did anything for a while. I did Frankie Seven, and uh, I just thought I had the in, you know, the inside, you know, angle on this one, you know, mm. and uh, um, I just thought it was s smart, and uh, I just thought it was a good, uh, you know, good thing, and um, not that I wanted to say, oh, I want to be a documentary filmmaker. You know, I, basically, I want to pay the bills. <laughs> and, uh, I just thought it was a good story, a good way mm. to tell a story. So we just followed me and my cra little crazy life around it with cameras. So, Did you have any unexpected reactions from any of your crew? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Some were good and some were bad. You got to you can watch the movie and you just <laughs> think it's kind of crazy. Sometimes for the better and sometimes for the worse. You know, but it was what it was. If anything that they said about this documentary, it's honest. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I'm totally embarrassed in it, but I just wanted to put it all out there, and I did. And let's take a look at the clip. Basically, we're going to tell you about a project that we're going to be working on. It's about two girls who meet each other. They live in a lesbian relationship. And, and it's the downward spiral into the club scene. And one gets a severe heroin problem, and the other spirals down with her. Typical story, you know, um, but uh, the difference in the twist is uh, one of the girls isn't really a girl. She's a boy oh. who lives a dual life. In one world, it's a girl. The other life is a boy. One of the girls actually happened to be uh, the filmmaker, Joe O'Farrell. As a life, as a as a girl, also a dual life. The uh, documentary is basically um, Joe O'Farrell um, might be living a dual life soon as a female um, documentary maker. I like to keep finding out more. I understand the long hair. <laughs> <laughs> that form of bravery is is mm. the greatest form of art, wouldn't you say? Well, <laughs> it's it was also my little uh, safety blanket because you know I tried to make something that I was so frightened over mm -hmm. uh, cool. Yeah. So it was my oh I'm shooting the you know so it was my little safety net and um, uh, you know so we went out and did it and. We did well. Um, we screened in a few foreign countries, um, India, 
uh, Brazil, Canada, we went to Inside Out. Um, uh, we won a peer award here locally and uh, uh, Utopia Film Festival, Rosebud. Um, we did a bunch of film festivals, a lot of screenings, some colleges, you know, and uh, um, it's been good. It's been really fun and it, it was uh, something that uh, uh, was just good for a lot of reasons and, um, you know, good for my community, um, uh, good for a lot of things and, uh, you know, and got great feedback and, and you know, great response and um, it's, it's been fun. So let's talk about um, a couple of your more recent films mm -hmm. that that you've worked on. What what would you say was like the most the most fun film that you've worked on lately? Oh, the most fun film. Uh, actually, I've been enjoying myself the last couple of years. I got my crew people that work for me now. I love them, and um, you know we we get to do a lot of different things. Uh, it's been a lot of shorts lately. I actually finished three documentaries. Um, uh, Sorkin Productions is we're actually still shooting for him, Roger Sorkin. He's out of Originally out of DC, and I was working for him. Um, and then Ivy Street Productions, Jonathan Darden. Um, um, uh, we just did a uh, shot Solar Vision and on the DC Eagle. So that was pretty fun. And everybody was just really nice with the doc work. And uh, um, just worked on something last night for Steve Yeager, uh, only Maryland Sundance winner. And um, uh, it was the first time I worked with Steve, and then, you know, I just did some grip work and bring the gear and stuff like that. He rented the gear. And, um, uh, oh, God, we were walking up and down a hill. It was raining. But it was fun. I liked the new, the, the, the crew there, and it, it was a good time. You know, it was hard. My legs hurt. But it was a good time. Um, uh, we shot a couple things uh, up in Delaware, and they were just, you know, good time. So I, I don't know if anything pops. It, it's just been a really nice ride lately. So it's been nice. Well, I think that the DC film community is really vibrant, really very supportive, very cohesive. If your films start getting out there and you're getting names and you're getting distribution, mm -hmm. would you stay in DC and keep making films or would you head off to Hollywood or what, what would you do long term? Oh no, I'm not going nowhere. <laughs> I, I'm established here and I, you know, I, I get calls and you know, it's like, hey, what are you doing next week? Or, you know, we have a, you know, whatever. And I built a client base. Mm -hmm. And um, why would I walk away from that? And, uh, um, you know, I got my cute little apartment up in Maryland. And I'm, 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 I'm here. I'm, I'm not going anywhere. I don't care how, if anything would blow up, you know. Um, I am not going nowhere, you know. And you can do this here, you know. There's no reason why you can't. You know, they, everybody says they go to New York and they go to um, L.A. because there's more work. Yeah, but there's more people looking for the work. Right. So, you know, it's, and it, a lot of it's who you know. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, people work with the people they work with. Right. So how do you, if you're a newcomer into the D.C. film scene, what would you say is the best way to start getting yourself known so that you can get into that network? Oh, well, there's a lot of organizations. There's the D.C., um, what is our DC thing called? Oh, I don't know, but there's a couple of organiza organizations down here. Back up in, ba in Maryland, Baltimore, because I'm closer to Baltimore, um, there's the Creative Alliance. But, you, you know, there's just a, a, a lot of networking things. Like, my greatest thing that I would never give up is women in film and video in DC. Uh, their listserv is just phenomenal. And, um, uh, you know, anything, you pretty much anything can be answered. There are professionals, you know, a lot of them are professionals. A lot of people want to get into business, but there's a lot of professionals there. So if you have a question, uh, who's doing what, you know, uh, Craigslist. Go on Craigslist and, you know, volunteer. If you've never worked on anything, volunteer. You, if you have the smarts, the drive, the time, you could just start meeting people. You start somewhere. This one is working on something. This one, the, it's so little circles that come through. And you work with this one, this work with this one, and you run into this actor four times in a year. It's a small community, you know. Um, I don't know everybody out there, but I know three people that he hired mm. or she hired, you know. So it's a very small community. The thing is, is just to get active, see, you know. First thing is the going Craigslist, women to join women in film. Uh, 
Uh, the Creative Alliance, go down there. You know, there's places. What do you look for when you're crewing up? Like, do you have certain criteria? Do you want to just work with people that you've already worked with before, or do you look for certain skill sets? What it well, it depends how big the feature is, um, or short, or whatever. Um, generally, I have a lot of um, rotating, you know, my crew that I use, but a lot of sometimes they're on other things. Then you got to take chances with other people. And it depends how bad you need crew people, and do you want to put it on Craigslist? I think that's what's interesting to people that want to watch this and learn about, like, well, how mm -hmm. do I get in? How would I get a job mm -hmm. working for a Michelle? So, mm -hmm. what, what would well, they do? You know, I, I've had a lot of people come in and won't want to do a certain thing. Thing is, if you go to on a film set and people like you, and, and a lot, a lot of times it's that, and you're and you know your job, you'll get hired. And then this one get knows this one and knows this one. And uh, you see who people to actually work and, you know, get paid. And, um, you know, I make it a point that if you got a call from me, you're, that means I'm giving you a paycheck for the most part. You know, unless it's my personal little things, that, but I'm usually doing you something, so you're getting something back in return. So um, it, it's just, get, just find someone on Craigslist, go join and find out who's done it. There's things everywhere now, you know, there's things everywhere. Awesome filmmaking advice from Michelle Farrell. For Indie Capital, I'm Pamela Nash, and this has been Michelle Farrell. Thank you.